Andretti Global once again talks about joining the NASCAR Cup Series. Plus, Greg Biffle is back. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. We are almost there, boys and girls. We are at the halfway point of the Olympics. Friday marks the halfway point. Next Friday, there'll be the closing ceremonies. Tom Cruise is going to rappel in from the stadium, and then he's going to jump out and parachute onto the Hollywood sign in California. I don't know how this is going to work, but that's what's going to happen. And then next weekend, the NASCAR Cup Series will be back on track at Richmond on Sunday night. Dual compound tires. Really interesting, you know, twist to be thrown into that race and we're finally back racing so tune in and watch it go out to the racetrack if you want to go to michigan go to darlington daytona wherever your little heart desires go to that racetrack enjoy it it's always a fun time or just tune in from home but we are almost back through the nascar summer break a much needed summer break right i get that but man at some point you just want to see some race cars back on track before football season gets here and everything just becomes about football so Getting into the actual news of the day, though, we have Andretti Global once again talking openly about wanting to join the NASCAR Cup Series. Team President J.F. Thorman talked on the Andretti Global Building a Brand video on YouTube that the team has been putting out, and he said that the, uh, you know, the expectation and the desire of Andretti Global is to still join the NASCAR Cup Series and the Formula One Series. Obviously, Formula One and Andretti have been at war uh, over the last, shoot, two years, probably two plus years. And seemingly they're still not any closer to, you know, a, a solution to that stalemate over there. But Andretti Global to NASCAR, well, that rumor keeps popping up every single year. And I'm pretty sure that this is going on about year 25 of this rumor continuing to go on. I mean, I was a child listening and reading these rumors on J-Ski when they were like, oh, Andretti is going to glow join the cup series with dodge and this and that and that nah, still hasn't happened i mean poor poor jayski is going to be able to start his career and retire and we're still going to have these andretti to nascar rumors that will still be abundant but jf thorman once again sparked up all the news and said openly that they want to join the cup series and that's not a shock right that's what their intention has been we've heard that um for the better part of two years now for the for you know, the most part, ever since they've been trying to Formula One, they've also been mentioned in the NASCAR space. And where are they going to join? I think the clear and evident team would absolutely be Spire Motorsports. I think it's pretty common knowledge at this point, but Gamebridge is an investor into Spire Motorsports. That's where all the money's coming from. The Dan Towerist side of things. He is the CEO and founder of Group 1001. That is the parent company of, of Gamebridge, Delaware Life. Uh, that's where all their money's coming from. Obviously, you've seen Jeff Dickerson and TJ uh, Pusher, Pusher, not really sure, sorry, I butchered that last name, not sure how you pronounce that, but they're basically the faces of Spire Motorsports. They're listed as the owners, but let's be honest here, they're a bit like the president and you know, Gamebridge is a bit like the Bilderberg Group or whatever conspiracy you want to believe in here. They're, they're ceremonial. They're there. They're the faces. They did start Spire, but all the money and all the um, uh, calls are kind of coming from back behind somebody else is pulling the strings out there and that's just kind of how this team is being run at this point and they're spending a lot of money you know jeff and tj don't have the 40 million dollars to buy that extra charter they didn't have the money to go out and buy rodney uh, buy rodney but pay rodney and, and get him to come to the team land michael mcdowell land whoever they're going to get for the seven car which does not sound like it's going to be kyle bush from what i've heard and a number of other big time changes. I mean, they just straight up bought Kyle Busch's truck series team. They bought Kyle Busch's shop. They're spending a lot of money and getting a lot more people on a lot more things over there. And that money is not coming from Jeff and TJ. That's coming from Dan Towers and, and the investors behind the scenes back there. So if Andretti does join, that seems like the spot that they'll join at because Dan Towers is a co-owner in that Andretti Global IndyCar team as well, and also an investor into the Formula One side of things. And heck, if they bring on the other partner, Guggenheim Partners, who have like a hundred plus billion dollars in assets under management, well, then they just immediately become the most wealthy team in the NASCAR Cup Series. But it is interesting if Andretti does end up joining Spire, Andretti Global has been getting closer and closer to General Motors. Of course, Cadillac is who they want to do their Formula One program with. Cadillac is also joining them on the IMSA side. Uh, Andretti WTR will be fielding the factory Cadillac uh, teams next year in IMSA, leaving that Acura program behind. And then there's rumors continue that go around the IndyCar paddock that Marshall Pruitt talked about on his podcast this week, as well as his silly season update that he posted on Friday on Racer.com about Andretti Global IndyCar 
switching over to Chevrolet power, getting away from the Honda camp. And to their credit, Rob Edwards over at Andretti Global said that that's not happening uh, for 2025. They have a contract with Honda through the end of 2025. They're very happy with Honda. You know, all the PR speak that goes along there, but I'm not saying that it can't happen. So Andretti having great ties to Chevrolet will certainly help Spire in that tier pecking order within the Chevy camp. Um, obviously, we know that Hendrick Motorsports, Rick Hendrick, he's like the Don Corleone of, of the Chevy camp. Everybody else is going to have to fall in line behind him. But Spire has really, really close relationship ties with Hendrick Motorsports. I mean, heck, at the Brickyard 400, I saw Chak and Alice get on top of their box pre-race and, and just check things out. That's not typical relationship between most teams. So they have very close ties over there. Andretti joining, having a great relationship with General Motors as well, is only going to help them get more resources and get more of what they need to get those cars to go faster. And for Michael Andretti to join, this makes the most sense for him. Today's video is sponsored by Driven Sunglasses. Once again, use code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. I have a new bra or Driven shirt on. I almost said BREAKHARD shirt. No, this is a Driven shirt. Use code BREAKHARD. Uh, I wear the sunglasses. Shane Van Gisbergen wears the sunglasses. Josh Berry, Ryan Priest, and maybe you can as well. So check out their website today. Moving on to another story real quick, and that is Greg Biffle, the 69 God. Probably don't call him that. Uh, I regret... Retract, rewind. He's not the 69 God. Does love 69, but Kendrick called Drake 69 God. That is a bad thing. Apologize for that, Greg Biffle. But like I said, does love the number 69. He will be making his return to the Arca West series for the first time in nearly 30 years. And about, what, eight days time on August 10th at Tri-City Speedway up in Washington, he'll be making his return to the Arca West series. He had two starts back in 1996, got a top five finish in one of those starts at uh Altamont, I believe, is where he had his uh, top five at. He did start P3 at Tucson and ended up finishing like back in the 30s in his first start, Arca West. He is also a former track champion at Tri-City, so it's a track that he is very familiar with as well. He'll be driving the number 23 car in the Arca West series. And for Biffle, that's a pretty cool thing to do. Get to go back home to the Pacific Northwest where Benny Parsons identified him way back 30 years ago, almost at this point, plucked him from obscurity, told Jack Roush you had to hire this guy. Jack did that, turned him into a truck champion, an Xfinity champion, nearly a cup championship if it wasn't for Tony Stewart in 2005. Greg Biffle has had a great career up to this point. He's been making, he did make some select starts in the cup series in 2022 for New York racing and that just didn't go very well. That ton of fuel pump issues. Uh, never did have a bucking Bronco type of car like uh, like Connor Daly did with the number 50 team at the money team. That's probably for the best, but did not get paid. And that's why Greg Whiffle never got back uh, with the New York racing team. And they showed up to Daytona with his name on the side of the hauler. And he's like, I'm not driving this race car. So they had to go out there with a piece of vinyl and cover it up. And man, these underfunded, underfunded small teams always find a new way to just mess things up. But for Biffle, he did make his truck series return back in 2019 after like 15 years away from that series and immediately went out and won a race with Kyle Busch Motorsports in his first race back. And then that was it. He was like, all right, one and done. He did come back in 2020 to run at Darlington with GMS in the truck series and the number 24 truck. He ended up finishing like in the 20s or late teens uh, that day. Not exactly the triumphant return that he had at Texas, but still, nonetheless, not too not too shabby there. So for Biffle, it's cool to see him come back. I'm excited to see what he can do. Wish his number was 69. Wish Will Kemmel was like, hey, screw it. Screw Arca East. We're headed out west to Washington. I'm not sure if they even have the Kimmels ever gone west of the Mississippi. I'm sure they have. They've been to Kansas before. So yeah, that makes sense. But <laughs> for, for Biffle, it's cool. If you don't follow Biffle on TikTok, Great follow on there. He's constantly getting into just absolute nonsense, buying random things on the side of the road, a dyno, uh, a boat. His wife is just seemingly down for for anything. She's a ride or die, supportive of anything that he wants to do. He still owns a quarry, and he's still racing Crown Vicks in his backyard or with Cletus McFarlane whenever he gets the chance. So it's cool to see Biffle just kind of going out there and living life and having a great time doing it. Now it's cool to see him back in the Arca West series. So let me know in the comments what you think about the Andretti Global uh, situation with NASCAR, as well as the Biff returning to racing. Like, subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.